Hello and welcome to this demonstration in which I'm going to show you how to design this phone docking station using Arkham Express 2015 R2. I'm also going to show you the CNC in action, so I'm going to show you a brief 3 minutes video at the end of the demonstration showing you the part being machined. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to switch on to Arkham. And as you can see on the right hand side of my screen, I've got no modules installed. That means that I'm going to create this part using the very basic version of Arkham Express. So I'm now going to create a new model, which is going to be 200 millimeters high and 300 millimeters wide with the resolution as high as possible and the center of the model being my origin. I'm going to click on OK and I'm now going to show you that creating four rectangles and typing one letter we can basically create all of the vectors that we need to then machine the part. So I'm going to enter the create rectangle tool and this rectangle is going to be 240 millimeters in width and 120 millimeters in height with a corner radius of 12 millimeters. So if I click on create, I can keep creating rectangles without closing the form down. So the next rectangle is going to be 72 by 12, corner radius of 2 millimeters this time, and centered in 0, 45. So this will be the slot for our form. So I click on create. And now I'm going to create a small slot for the charging cable. So this is going to be 9.2 millimeters wide and slightly more than 6 millimeters high, so say 6.1, with a 1 millimeter corner radius and centered in the same place. Finally, we need to create, as you can see in the image, this big pocket here. So we could create it by creating two circles and then we could join them with polylines, but the quickest way of doing it is by creating another rectangle, which is going to be 220 by 66 with a corner radius of 33, so basically half the height to have fully rounded edges. This time, this is going to be centered in 0, minus 17. So if I click on create, I can now close the form as I'm done with my rectangles. And the last thing I'm going to do is to create my text. So just one letter in our case. So I'm going to enter my text vector creator tool. You can choose the font you prefer. I'm going to go for art script. And the size is going to be 30 millimeters. Now we're not interested in the character spacing because we're only going to type one letter. So I'm just going to click anywhere and I'm going to type A. Click on create. But obviously, we want this letter to be in the center of our pocket. So I can now shift select my pocket and click on my center vector icon. Like so. So before we start to create two paths for this, um, the reason for creating this lot being 6.1 millimeters in height, so slightly more than 6, Step, I'm assuming that I've only got three tools available. Uh, a 10 mm end mill, a 6 mm end mill, and a 32 mm 120 degrees V-bit carving tool. So for all of the toolpaths I will create, I will only use those three tools. So I can now switch to the 3D view because I'm done with my 2D design and I can start to create toolpaths. So I'm going to select a view from the top and the first toolpath I'm going to create is my profiling one the one that I will use to cut the part out of my block of wood. So if I click on the vector, the most external one, I can click on tool paths and select a profiling one. In this case, I want to profile outside the selected vectors. And first of all, let's set the material to be 30 millimeters thick with the materials at zero and the model position in the material to be on top of my block. I can now select my finish depth, which in this case is going to be 30, because I want to profile all the way through, and I can choose my profiling tool. So in this case, I'm going to use the first of the tools I've got, 
available so a 10 millimeters and new if i'm happy with this i can click on calculate now and as you can see the toolpath has been calculated now i can open this make this toolpath invisible and start to think about the other toolpaths i need to create so my next strategy is going to be a 2d area clearance toolpath for this pocket so I select it and go into my 2D error clearance toolpath form. I can set my finish depth, which in this case is going to be 15. I want to cut half the way through. And I want to add a 10 mm end mill as a tool. So again, I'm using the same tool. Now remember, you can change the tool settings if you want. But what I want to do is to change my strategy to be offset. So if I'm happy, I can click on calculate now and you can see the result on my screen. So we now need to think about these two slots and obviously we're going to use the smaller end mill we've got available, so our six millimeters end mill. So I can click on this phone slot and enter the error clearance toolpath again, select a finish depth again of 15, add my tool, so a six millimeters end mill, and I want to change the strategy to offset again, and I can now click on calculate now. If I close the form down and again make all of my toolpaths invisible, I can now machine this small slot. Again, area clearance. This time the start depth is going to be 15 millimeters. I don't want to waste any moves and I know that I've already cut 15 millimeters deep. But in this case, the finish depth is going to be 30 because I want to cut all the way down to the bottom of my part. My tool, as I said, is going to be my 6mm end mill. And again, I want to change the strategy type to be offset. I can click on calculate and the toolpath will calculate as you can see. Last thing, we want to engrave this letter. So if I click on my A, I can choose a V-bit carving toolpath. I want to machine the selected vectors with a start depth of 15. Obviously, that pocket was already cut 15 millimeters deep. And for my carving tool, I'm going to choose the third tool I've got available. So my 120 degree, 32 millimeters V-bit carving tool. I can now click on refresh here to see the maximum width and depth of cut. And I always prefer to have my maximum depth to be slightly more than one millimeter. So if I click on calculate, the toolpath is calculated and you can see if I select a view from the side and make the other toolpath invisible, that the tool goes up and down to give that carved effect to my letter. So we can now simulate all of our toolpaths. Right click on toolpaths, simulate all and we can see how this looks like. So it looks nice, but there's one thing I want to add, and I want to show you is how to add chamfers to our part without any complications. So what I'm going to do is to select a view from the top, select my outermost rectangle, and offset it. So enter my offset tool. Offset this by two millimeters outwards with radius corners, so if I click on offset, my copy will be created. Now without closing tool, I'm going to create a copy of this vector here. So if I select it, I want this vector to be offset by two millimeters inwards, like so. I can close the form down and now I can create my profiling strategies that will be useful to create chamfers without complicating our lives. So I can select my copy for the outermost vector and I'm going to go to Paths, Profiling. In this case, I want to profile along the selected vectors with a finish depth of 2 mm, so exactly the same as the distance I've offset the vector by. For my profiling tool, I'm going to choose my Vibit tool and I can now click on Calculate now and see that there is one pass here. I'm going to do the same for this internal 
copy of my pocket vector, profiling, profile along, finish depth of two again. Profiling tool is going to be my VB carving tool. I can click on calculate now, close the form, and I can now simulate all of my tool paths together. You can see that the part has now got the chamfers that we've created. To improve the appearance of my simulation, I can get rid of this external part by clicking on simulation, delete with material and clicking here. You can also change the material of the simulation here. I'm going to go for light oak this time. So, I'm also going to show you how to export these toolpaths. So once you've got them all here, you can go toolpaths, save toolpath as, and as you can see, we've got seven different toolpaths here. Now I want them to be saved individually. So I want them to, save, to be saved as separate files. And that is in case you've got a tool change that is not automatic, or in case you want to see the result of each toolpath individually. I also want to change this setting here so that I can append the details of my toolpaths to the file names. So once you've chosen the folder you want and the file name, you can now scroll through the machine file format list we've got. But in my case, I'm just going to go for a generic G code in millimeters. I can click on save and if I now browse to the folder, you will see seven different tab files, which I cannot edit with Notepad++, which is a free software you can get off the internet. And you can now check for each toolpath your G code. So before saying goodbye, I'm now going to show you that three minutes video I told you about is about this part being machined on a machine that we've got available here at Delcan. So thank you very much for watching.